in the in the business? Well, I suppose I'm at them seventy years, and uh, we just went out to get them to uh, they eat them, not to sell them, because there was no sale for them. But uh, sometimes there was plenty, and sometimes there was none, because they were all wrecked in 1847, and it took years for them to come back. So they finally came back then. So we went out with this gaft, about 18 inches long, and we cut them. That's the way we cut them. Which is a kind of a metal rod, is it? It's a, it's a steel rod. It's and steel. how do you use that, or how does that work? And when you walk backwards, the, the razor squirts up the water, and you follow the, the hole down the, 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 the razor, mm -hmm. and you just put the aft through the, through the razor, and you give it a half twist and pull them up. Okay. It's it's anyone can do it. Like it's no it's not a gift. So how deep do they live in the sand, or do they come up and down? Tell me about they, what their activities. They do. They come up and down. They come up and down. You see, they be nearly on the top of the sand when they squirt the water up, and if you're quick enough, you'll get them before they go down to the depth of about maybe eighteen inches, and then some clever shot came and then and uh, they catch them with salt. Mm -hmm. They put the salt on the hole, and if you wait long enough, you'll see them breeding. They get, you'll see them breeding, and they'll come out. Finally, they'll come out, but it's a slow way. But you'd get years ago, you'd get a, you'd get hundred ways of them there in autumn. Really? Yeah. And what at that time was it? Kind of something you used to supplement your diet, or was it quite an important food? It was something we had to eat. Yeah. <laughs> So we lived off the beach. Really? We lived off the beach and we only got them now twice or three times a year. Uh, the month of February, March. And it was just like when you went out and got them that and it was just like having a talk before your Christmas dinner. That's the way it was. So and it was an important addition like f protein or seafood for your diet? Correct. Right. That's, you just went out and you got them that way and, and you ate them. There was no sale for them, no nothing. So they were never sold in a in a market they condition never, like other no, fish. Not that I know of, anyway. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of, because as I said, you only got them twice a year. Mm -hmm. You only got them twice a year, and it, it was only a card. No hotel you could put them on the menu because they couldn't get them. Mm -hmm. You'd only get them like a, a couple of times a year. And what way would you cook them then? <laughs> there was only the part of the pan that <laughs> there was no microwaves or no nothing. So you either boil them or fry them. Um, some people fried them with a, a, a lump of a rasher in a pan. And, oh, lovely. Um, but the longer you boil them, the harder they get anyway. And somebody done them with milk in a pot and you now with butter and pepper and salt and you're taking it off with a bit of corn flour and um, that was it. And what did you call them at that time or those dishes? We just called them the razor. Mm -hmm. Just the razor. I never knew of any other name for them. Mm -hmm. We just called them the razor. And, and, um, a lot of people used to put hot water on them to open them. Yeah. But then they say then they were cooked. Mm -hmm. And then they put them into a pot and boil them again and they were just about to go up. So, so they, were a, they were a dish that you looked forward to then? It wasn't kind of penance having to eat them? Oh no, no. It was something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just, uh, there was other things here that we used to get to, cockles and clams and, you know, we, we just lived off the beach. Mm-hmm. You know, because things wasn't too good that time, like going back in the 40s, 1947, it was a tough year again. Everyone knows about it. What happened in that 47? It was the worst snow in, in, in living memory. Um, it wrecked every, everything. There was winkles, cockles, clams, razors, there were knee hay along the whole coast. And my father and other old fishermen there, they, they gathered them and they put them in bundles and they tied them with a, <coughs> they made little plastic bands with a, a tube of a bike mm -hmm. and they put them in bundles of about a dozen and put them in, into barrels, wooden barrels and put salt on them and they kept them for, they kept them for weeks and that's what we were eating there for, you could eat them there twice or three times a week. We no turkeys, no chickens, no nothing. So you were lucky to lucky to have them. Lucky to have them. So and when did that foraging and that custom of taking food off the beach in that way? When did that sort of peter out or stop? Um, 
it, it never stopped. Every year, people go out with this gaff still mm -hmm. and catches them. But the boats now is at them only about 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years, and, and um, they're selling, they have a market for them. But we never had a market. We just went out to, to catch them to ourselves, to, just to, to, to eat them ourselves, you know. And did you have good fun? Did, did you have good fun doing it? It was, it was all fun, yeah. It was all fun, and yeah, it, there was all this. The, every women, women and children, and everyone could catch them. Like. Mm. You know, there was no gift in it. Mm -hmm. you, you went out there, and if you were, if you had a little bit of interest, you'd, you'd catch them there in a couple of minutes if you just told the person what to do. Mm -hmm. If you no bother. Well, Mike, you're a very good fisherman. You're a very good fisherman. Do you think it's interesting that there is a renewed interest in? foraging and local food and, and actually taking things that are almost there in front of you in the in in nature and at the seashore yeah i think i think that there's there was there's things out there that we do we still don't know that they are and um it could be a good thing yeah mm -hmm. that, that, that's, um, people are we, interested we, in people is interested now we don't know what we don't know what our back door yeah you know so now that, that the boat is at the leisure and all that, it's, it's, it's even employment to people that they be able to walk on the roads there. Mm -hmm. And instead of that, they're out there now making a few bob with themselves. And mm -hmm. it, it's a business like, you know. And it, Anagassan is, is quite famous for crab and seafood, isn't it? Uh, well, it, it, you have to travel for the crabs and, and you have to go away now a couple of miles from here, out of the point of the Nene and up around. Port Bay and all that for lobster or crab, but uh, you wouldn't get them around here. Now you get, you get mussels in an old rack, rack that's out there, but I, I don't know whether they be good or bad. Some say they're bad and some say they're good. I don't know. Do you think it's good that having the razor clam, and do you think that's good at, through the Boyne Valley Food Series and the food movement, people are getting more aware of what a rich sea area this is and what food potential there is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's a good it's a good thing. Yeah, that you get them in and get more people eating them, and that the local people could sell them, and you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. So for a long time we might have, I mean, every time I come up here I'm taken aback by how beautiful it is and how good the seafood is. And we often talk about West Cork or Kerry, but it's almost as good or better here. It's better. <laughs> I think it is anyway. <laughs> I'm not leaving it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, no, it, it's, it's, a lovely, it's a lovely scenery and you just can the right day that everything is nice and clear mm. and no wind mm -hmm. and the tide is at the right time, you know, and it's... Not many places you see the tide coming in and out twice to one day, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and they, they reckon it's the healthiest bay in Ireland here because the tide goes out so far that the health is in the sand. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm led to believe. I don't know whether it be <laughs> right or wrong. Well, you're a good example of it. You're healthy. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a long time hanging around anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and many years more. Thanks very much for talking you're to me. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome.